happening gang it's your boy retro back again with another reaction video yeah yeah uh today we're on a fox news clip um on biden family broke a staggering number of laws um says rep comer i'm excited to check this one out um hopefully it's some new we get some new updates maybe they've broken a couple new uh new laws um maybe they set a role record for how many laws um a president has won during his term you know what i mean i'm excited to check out how the biden family has gotten more corrupt let's just say that uh we're gonna hop straight into it guys make sure you guys like this video before we even get anything going hit that like button you know what i'm saying whoop um hit that subscribe button went over to 10k y'all let's hop straight into it rather you know um, said that he was that hunter biden was selling the illusion of said access the witness testimony was very clear that hunter may have quote uh, promoted the illusion of influence on his father. A source familiar with the matter tells me that, you know, Archer told the committee that Hunter Biden was selling the illusion, illusion in quotes, of access to his father. And Goldman said that Archer testified that it was the illusion of access. That was the media and New York Congressman Dan Goldman spinning a new narrative following Devin Archer's testimony on the Biden family business. Right. But newly released transcripts reveal the phrase illusion of access actually came from Representative Goldman's mouth first. Goldman asking, quote, it's not about selling access to his father. It's about selling the illusion of access to his father. Is that fair in a leading question? Archer responds, is that fair? I mean, yeah, I think it is. I think that's that's almost fair. almost fair. That's almost fair. Mm -hmm. House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer released those transcripts. And that's why you gotta watch the way, like the you, you gotta you know listen to the way they're wording it. You know, they put in that illusion of access, you know what I'm saying? Because they don't want to say that he sold direct access. You know what I'm saying? He I feel like it was direct access. We all know it was direct access, but the illusion part keeps Biden separate. If you guys didn't key in on that yet. Scripts. And he joins us now. Congressman, thanks for joining us this morning. What do you make of this leading, you know, questioning and sort of the lack of curiosity and the lack of interest in getting to the bottom of this corruption scandal on the part of Democrats? Well, every two weeks we produce more evidence of wrongdoing by the Biden family. We produce more links to Joe Biden. And yet the mainstream media continues to turn a blind eye. Uh, I keep thinking uh, at some point they're going to break. And we're seeing some movement from uh, certain networks like CBS, but we still have a long way to go. But the one thing that drives me crazy is anytime I go down into a skiff and get a briefing from the FBI or anytime we do a transcribed interview like we did last week, you'll either have Jamie Raskin or Dan Goldman come out and tell the press complete lies about what we just heard and the press will run with it. We produce bank records, we produce evidence, everything that I've said about criminal activity by the Bidens, I can back up with evidence. Yet one member of the House Oversight Committee on the Democrat side can come out and tell a narrative to the press and they run with it. Congressman, um, I've heard you say on several occasions, this is the beginning. You've essentially just begun the deposition phase, starting with Devin Archer. Uh, there are a lot of other characters in this, Eric Schwerin, Hunter Biden himself. What is he reporting from outside? Am I hearing, I seen a lightning strike, I ignored it because I didn't want to interrupt the video. But dude, it is thunder and everything. You don't have any type of sound system that you, you got a, what are you outside? Come on, Calmer, get it together. Archer. Uh, there are a lot of other characters who actually just begun the deposition phase, starting with Devin Archer. Uh, there are a lot of other characters in this, Eric Schwerin, Hunter Biden himself. Can you give us some, some expectation of what's to come with the deposition phase? Yeah, well, we have other people like Devin Archer who were in business, so to speak, with Hunter Biden. I hate to say in business because they didn't have a legitimate business. Their business was influence peddling. And that's what Devin Archer testified in the in the transcribed interview. They were simply selling the brand, which was Joe Biden. This is what Devin Archer said. Uh, they got paid because people needed access to the federal government. And they knew that uh, Hunter Biden was Joe Biden's son and if he if they needed something and they always did need something because every one of these entities that were paying the Bidens the millions and millions of dollars they were uh, 
people with issues in their country. They were under investigation for corruption, uh, many mm -hmm. of them. Uh, they were crooks, so to speak. So we're going to bring in additional people. There are about five or six people that whose names were also on these shell companies, these fake companies that the Bidens were using to launder money from these foreign nationals. Remember, the process involved a foreign country, a foreign national wiring money to mm -hmm. a fake company. Then the fake company would then turn around and wire the money to the Biden family members. They did this to hide the source of the revenue because they right. weren't supposed to get money from many of these countries. And secondly, they did it to hide from the IRS so they wouldn't have to pay taxes. I mean, the number of laws that have been broken by the Biden family is staggering. And what we saw last week in the transcribed interview, Joe Biden knew all along who they were getting money from and why. Real quick, Mr. Chairman, what was you? Were Every single time. That's what I'm saying. Joe Biden knew what he was doing. You know what I'm saying? Because there, it wasn't like Hunter was giving these, you know, giving people access, saying that he was going to, you know, give them some access to Joe Biden, um, fake access and saying he would do things that he wouldn't. Hunter was following through, following through with what he was saying he was going to do. You know what I mean? When people were asking that sanctions not be placed upon them uh, when sanctions are released from the United States, um, the list rolled out for the sanctions and those people that paid were missing from the list. Like this was this wasn't like um, where Hunter was selling this, you know, fake selling influence. He was for real selling it like he had access. He would go and tell his dad every time. Hey, I need you, dad. Um, in this deal, I took this as much money from so and so to not place sanctions on their country. Um, could you not place sanctions on their, their country, please, dad? And I will give you some of the money. And Joe was like, yes, son, I can do that for you. Yes, son, I can do that for you. And on multiple occasions, and it's starting to come out and the evidence is being ignored or twisted, like you've seen with the Devin Archer. We're in the room. What was the disposition of Devin Archer? I mean, nobody closer to it than him. Was he reluctant? Was he relieved? I mean, I, what was the, the mood in the room? Mm -hmm. Well, I had the staff lead the deposition. Uh, I didn't want a lot of members in the room because uh, that makes the, the witness uneasy. Uh, we had uh, Andy Biggs and Jim Jordan in the room. I was on the phone. But at the, at the end of the day, uh, Devin Archer was, was under a lot of pressure. Look, the Department of Justice sent him a letter on Saturday. They sent him another letter on Sunday. Uh, there was constant communication from the Biden legal team trying to intimidate and yeah, harass like a witness, trying to encourage him not to cooperate with the House Oversight Committee. They are doing what? What did they? Does he is is he is, is he allowed to like let us know what the what the messages detailed or the letters detailed that was sent from the Department of Justice or or Biden's DOJ, I should say? Because what the heck is that? Not he can they not, can they do that? Is that abuse of power? Are they allowed to you know send him these letters? What are they saying to him? Are they trying to pay him off? Are they trying to? Say they're going to do something to him or harm him if he doesn't cooperate with them. What is that? Is that normal? And harass our witness, trying to encourage him not to cooperate with the House Oversight Committee. They are doing this with our other witnesses. But uh, we're going to continue to bring people in. We're going to continue to get bank records. In fact, hopefully next week we're going to release more bank records that show more suspicious wires from our enemies around the world that were going into the Biden family's back pocket. So, uh, the, the, you know, everyone that's cooperating with our committee is under great pressure because of their concern that the Department of Justice is going to uh, implicate them in wrongdoing and protect the Bidens and that, that, that uh, they're going to be eaten alive in the press. Uh, this is, a, this is a, an example of witness intimidation every day by our Department of Justice and by the Biden legal team. Witness that is intimidation. That's so disheartening to hear you that our me? own officials, both in the DOJ, the FBI, but also yep. the Democrats, don't even want to hear from these, these witnesses, that they actually want to intimidate them and not let this information come out. It just, it's just sickening. Um, by the way, you are, to move to another topic, at the St. Jerome Fancy Farm Picnic. It's like the largest picnic ever, a huge political event. When my husband would go to events like this, he'd get a really good feel for where the people are at, how, what they're talking about. What are you hearing from the people on the ground um, where you're at in Kentucky? Yeah, I'm in West Kentucky at the Fancy Farm Picnic. This is the uh, greatest Kentucky 
tradition in, in politics. Uh, all the political candidates for statewide office come here to this little community mm -hmm. in Graves County, Kentucky, and give old-fashioned stump speeches. But I've been here all week in West Kentucky, and I can tell you, one thing that uh, Democrats and Republicans all agree on is they despise public corruption. And everyone's encouraging me and encouraging our investigation. They appreciate what we're doing. They stand behind what we're doing because they want to know the truth. And right now, the only person, the only entity in America that's providing the truth about the wrongdoing that the Bidens did is the House Oversight Committee mm -hmm. because many of the mainstream media aren't. Fox is doing a great job, but most of the mainstream media is not. And the Democrats like Dan Goldman continue to walk out in front of the press and, and deliver a completely false narrative of what's going on. Well, Congressman James Comer, we appreciate you bringing all this to light and joining us this morning on Fox and Friends. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks Thank you, Congressman. Me. I'm Steve. That was a good one. That was a good one. I, I like the way uh, Comer broke that down, man. Like the Democrats or um, I feel like a lot of Democrats would like to see, you know, what I mean, um, based on the Biden DOJ trying to, you know, kind of hide or the Biden cabinet trying to hide and, you know, prevent this, the truth become, from coming to light by intimidating, um, intimidating witnesses. Um, like Archer, Devin Archer, send them multiple letters trying to get him not to testify or come forth against the Bidens. You know, it's like they don't want the truth to get out versus I know a lot of Democrats want to see the truth and want to know what's going on. So then they can make a fair assessment whether they want to choose, you know, them or them, you know, at least give us the, you know, the chance at the truth. They don't even want the truth to come out, which says a lot like you don't even want to know the real truth or the real evidence of why we feel like these allegations against the Bidens are true. I mean, I don't know. That just sounds, I don't, that just sounds so like, you know, shelled off from society or like they just want to have one narrative and it's their narrative and they want to push it. It's weird. Um, you know, that was Comer and Fox news on Biden family breaking a staggering number of laws. Um, make sure you guys like this video, subscribe to the channel with a 10 K y'all. I catch y'all on the next one. We got